we're here to do the intro to Cassie, the Canadian Snowboard Instructors Association. Uh, tonight, as we kind of roll through, um, do a quick agenda. We've got a bit of housekeeping. So we already talked about people being on mute if you don't have anything to say. But if you do want a question, please just ask any question you got. Um, if you're thinking it, probably someone else is wondering it as well. Just take yourself off mute and fire a question. I will try and watch the chat um, so that uh, I can stay as apprised to what's going on as I can. But if I miss something, please just turn on your mic. Um, other than that, uh, we already did a little bit of Zoom basics. We're going to look at the five skills, five steps, three core competencies. And then we're going to do some assessment. We're actually going to look at some snowboarders and try and figure out what the heck's going on with them. Then we're going to look at a little bit how people acquire information in their body, uh, some ways that we teach, and then we'll just go over a couple resources. And then at the end, I'm going to turn off the recording. And if you guys have any other questions about what's going on, your program, anything in your profile, I'll try and answer everything uh, tonight as well. So hopefully it is useful for everybody. Let's keep going. So when we talk about teaching snowboarding, has anybody taught snowboarding before? If you have, just turn on your mic, say hi. Hi. Hi, Adam. Adam, what have you, where have you taught before? I taught with Vass for the, oh, like seven years and then I went away for four. So now I'm back. Awesome. And did you have your CADs before? I, yes. Yes. But if it was yes, seven I, years ago, it's, it's evolved a little, I imagine. So cool. Probably. Good and then Babette, I saw your microphone go off for a second and then back on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I teach, I taught uh, back in the Netherlands, which sounds then, quite funny because we have no mountains, but we have indoor slopes. So, right. Yeah. I thought you just tied like ropes around the cows and then the cows ran and you snowboarded behind. Yeah, or kites. That's a new thing as well. Kites, Kite, the kites, kites, kites is actually really fun. I have a power kite. It is a lot of fun, actually. Uh, you just need somewhere flat like the Netherlands to go play. Cool. Um, okay, well, looking at this slide, we have five skills that we teach. And I like the way that um, Cassie kind of lays this out for us. So the, the things that kind of jump out, you see pivoting, edging, pressure control, but they are all encompassed by position and balance. So that is always the, the biggest thing that we are working on is always trying to be in a good position on our board and balanced um, relative to the task that we're doing. And then a lot of them intersect in the middle with timing and coordination and kind of how we get the, I mean, if you've ever seen a really like great snowboarder and they just like their cotton, beautiful little seas down the run and everything looks the same distance and same timing, um, that's sort of the dream of how we want to be able to snowboard. Not that we often do, because if you're like me, you're ripping through the trees and trying to not get hit by things, um, dodging all little kitties, and then looking for any good lips to catch a little bit of air. And I'm sure that's the same for everybody, right? Yes, no? Okay, some of you, it's all good. Um, so when I think about these, and one of the ways that I like to learn things is that I like to internalize things. So I'm not bad at reading something and memorizing it, but if I can attach any sort of motion to it, um, I will do a little bit better. So let's everybody stand up with me and give yourself a little bit of space. And I'm just gonna tilt my screen so you can see a little more. All right, so if we're standing up, what do you think good position and balance looks like when you're in snowboard? Anybody can turn on your mic and talk to me, that would be amazing. A little bit of lower center of gravity. Mm. And now you're getting really technical early. I love it. Okay. Lower center of gravity. So when we talk about center of gravity, we talk about something called the center of mass. We're kind of where if we add up all of our body parts, sort of the heaviest part or average part of our body is. For most of us, it's somewhere sort of between our belly button and our hips, depending on how we're built and uh, our orientation. Um, women and men are built a little bit differently. So the center of mass is somewhere in that area. And if we can get that center of mass over our base of support, which sounds so fancy, um, that just means that we're not falling over. And the world of stand snowboarding, position and balance, we are usually um, with our, do you usually put your dominant foot in the back or the front? Well, there's an mm. interesting question. What do people do? Front. front. Put your dominant front. foot in the front? So if you're right footed, normally you put your right foot in the front? In oh, in right. the back. I put it in the back, yeah. Oh, I love that there's confusion already. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> and I'm okay with confusion. There isn't a right answer. So traditionally, we would say 
you know, if you got somebody to pretend they're kicking a soccer ball, that would be their dominant foot, whichever one they want to kick with first. And we used to put it in the back. Um, but now it doesn't matter. Just have people try and snowboard both ways and see what feels good. And if we teach them equally both ways right away, then they never have to know whether they're goofy or switch or anything. And they just ride. They don't think about it, which is a wonderful way to go. But if I think about things in general, we get our body to line up. What, do we have a bend in our ankle, yes or no? No. Well, yes. No, no bend in the ankle, yes. No, yes. Okay, I'll give you a free one. There's gonna be a bend in the ankle. There's gonna be a little reverse bend in the knee. And then do we bend much in the hips? What do you think? Do we ride really hunched over or do we lie pretty much standing tall? Standing tall? Standing mostly, tall. Mostly standing straight. Yeah, so ish. I like the word ish a lot. We are straight ish in the upper part of our body. And our lower part of the body has a bend in the knee and the ankle so that we can flex and absorb things as we get going. So if everybody's still standing up and you put your hands to the side, and if you just jump up and land and then point your head the direction you want to go, we'll call that relatively good position and balance in a static environment. It's a good place to start. So I do that a lot with my kids and then I'll just get them to be a little bit taller in their spine so that they're not quite so hunched over as that landed. Good? All right, so that is called position of balance. What do you think pivoting is on a snowboard? You guys can all take off your mics if you want. We're only like 16, 20 people here. This isn't much. Hip rotations. Hip rotations. Okay. I'm not opposed to that. Anybody else? Um, going on your toe, your, your toe edge or your back edge. So actually, we'll leave that one for a second because that's actually going to be edgy. Okay. Yeah, but I love that you're thinking about it. Uh, where you put the weight of your body. So if you're you know, leaning back or leaning forward, you pivot that. So funny enough, leaning back and leaning forward is actually pressure, which we're getting to as well. So I love that you're, you're coming up with all these <laughs> answers. Pivoting is somehow getting our lower body to start to turn a little bit. And if we're standing in our good sort of position and balance, nice straight spine, and you think about taking your front knee, so if we're riding, which it doesn't even matter, just pick a way that you think you're riding, and you kind of take your knee and drive it in a little half circle, then that is actually will cause the board to start to pivot. Someone said the hip and the knee and the hip can move together. And if they all move together, then your upper body will just come with them. So that's what starts a pivot. So when I think about pivot, for this exercise, we're just going to think about kind of moving that knee in a little half circle to get things going. Good? All right, edging. Who was talking about edging? Someone's talking about toes. Uh, Jill, I was. Jill. Okay, yeah. so if you lift your toes, what, heel, what edge are we on? The back edge. Okay, and we call it the heel edge. And if you lift your heels, then you're on your? Toe edge. Toe edge. All right, so here we go. We can go toe edge, heel edge, and that is what edging is. And then was it Babette talking about pressure control? Mm -hmm. So yeah. even just moving a little bit from the front foot to the back foot can be pressure control. So can rising and falling a little bit. And when you get really good, we talk about extension. And that is when you're getting into and you're able to push against and then retraction and pull it all back in. So those are all versions of pressure control. And then timing and coordination. What do you think timing and coordination is? Getting it all together. <laughs> it's pretty good, yeah. And so how I think about timing and coordination is I kind of do a little dance move, like they do, you know, um, what's, what's the, uh, Fred, Fresh Prince, Carlton. You know, he's got the great moves. <laughs> so oh, I would think that kind yeah. of coordination. Edging we know is back and forth. If I need a motion for pressure, what do you think we should do? Could we just squat down? But when you do it, you have to make a good sound. You gotta go, oh! Like that, because that'll <laughs> stick in your brains. All right, so everybody's still standing up, right? Now we got to practice. Get this stuff in our brain by movement a little bit. So what is the motion we do for position and balance? Little jump, nice tall spine. You can bend in your ankle and knee. For pivoting, we're going to drive that knee kind of like we're Elvis Presley. Nice. Edging, we're going to go up on our toes or heels. Back and forth. Pressure control. Ah! down low and grunt 
and the time and coordination. All right, now I'm going to shout them out in different orders, and you just got to go for it. And if everybody can turn on their camera, they can. This will look great. <laughs> who's who's brave enough? I know some of you are. Here it comes. There it goes. All right. Oh. <laughs> you ready? All right. Know. Let's start. Position to balance. <laughs> Edging. No. Eyes. Pivoting. Drive that knee. Yeah. Pressure control. <gasps> Time and coordination. Yeah. Pivoting. Drive the knee. Nice. Edging. Pressure control. <gasps> Time and coordination. Nice. Position and balance. Position and balance. Pivot. Edge. Pressure. <gasps> that was pretty good. <laughs> nice work. Thank you, everybody. Well right? It's a crazy way to learn. But I bet you you remember that stuff. Bet you it gets a little bit stickier when we can move and play a little bit. Ah, a little sip of water. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to breathe when we're having so much fun. So these are the skills that we teach. And this is kind of the order of things that we do to make sure that we teach them in a way that makes sense. So in Cassie, we've got five steps. First one's basic. Anybody, does anybody know what basic is? Or I mean, without reading everything it says there, what are some of the things that you might teach somebody like right first day, they've never even seen a snowboard. What are some things you might teach them? How little parts are called? Well, yeah, that's a great one. Just show them the snowboard, show them the, the tip, the tail, the edges, show that some things are sharp, um, teach them how to get in and out of their boots, their bindings, that's great. Make what sure they strap their boots. Yeah. Any other sort of basic moves? Uh, how to push with one foot. I think that was from Isaac. Yeah, Isaac, that's perfect. Yeah, how to, how to just kind of move around. I always think of basic, like how to move around in relatively flat, flat environments. Stuff that you use for getting on and off the chairlifts. Um, just getting, you know, to and from, you know, whatever, wherever you are, going up a little hill, down a little hill, all those sorts of things are, are considered basic. And what's cool about basics is that if you teach it really well, you accidentally teach a lot of the core movements that you're actually going to try and incorporate once they start sliding. So you'll go over stuff about bending all those joints to stay balanced, centered and balanced position. You'll look at how to turn the board by kind of lifting and dragging a knee when you only have one foot in. And all those things will come together. So it's a great thing. Always start with the basics. Then we do some sliding, which is really just getting comfortable to people sliding along the snow it's such a if you it's hard to remember back because we've all been doing this for so long but to just feel that momentum and know that like hey i'm in control is great great fun there's a bunch of sliding drills you guys are going to look at how to do with one foot two feet um and yeah there's a whole progression that you'll work through uh, when you come and do your on hill session what do you think control is turning turning is not turning is next oh oh it's Before, stopping. Stopping would be part of it. Yeah. So stopping would be a part of it for sure. Strapping your front foot in and then just sliding a bit, stepping on your board, stepping off again. Just yeah. So um, what you're talking slides. about that, that sort of like kick stop and stuff is a little more in basics. Control is hmm. when we start using a bit of a slope, but we generally stay in one static direction uh, with either our uh, toe side or heel side. Right, so either your body facing down the mountain or your back facing down the mountain. And we get used to moving the board um, from side to side and in straight lines, both with one foot and two feet in. And it starts to start to build on some of these things that we looked at here. So you're not really pivoting, but we are working edging, pressure control, definitely position and balance. And if you do it all really smooth, we get into this time and coordination. So it's pretty much everything except for pivoting. And the next thing we're going to do is turning, which somebody said. And guess which uh, skill that adds? Right, you're all saying pivoting. I can see it. And I can see <laughs> it all. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we have to find some way now to change the direction of the board and get onto the new edge. So that's what turning is all about. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing we teach is flow, which is just putting everything together and really going out and exploring the mountain and finding great ways to, uh, to enjoy your skills. So that's kind of the steps that we, we play when we're in Cassie. Um, they are very, very similar to actually what you're going to see in CADS. 
Um, but the only difference is in CADs, we spend a little more time in equipment just so that people are, are comfortable with what exactly we're asking them to use. Next, so we know the skills, we know the order we're gonna teach in. I need to help give you some ways to know if people are doing it well. And um, Cassie's come up with something just called right. the, the three yeah. competencies, which makes it really easy. Um, and I'm just noticing that there's an extra N randomly in mine. Um, so the three things that we look for with snowboarders, are they centered and mobile in their position? Are they turning the board with their lower body? Or a better way to say that is maybe they aren't turning it with their upper body. And then the last one is, are they balanced over the working edge? And these are pretty three little simple sort of expressions. And if you put them in your head and start to look at snowboarders, you'll very quickly know which one of the skills we need to help them work on to achieve that better. If we jump into this photo, um, this is a pretty good snowboarder. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it's also one of their top instructors, so I'm hoping it's pretty good. Um, when I look at this snowboarder and we talked about theirs, you can see, it's a little bit tricky, but the, you can see that there's a bit of a bend in the ankle. There's definitely lots of bend at the knee. And then he's not really hunched over the snowboard a whole lot. He's standing nice and tall and allowing that board to work underneath him. If we think about turning with the lower body, when I see this image, I don't, I, I can see that everything, so his knees, hips, and shoulders are all moving together, which tells me that he's driving from the lower body. If I saw an image where um, right now I could see like the zipper of his jacket and I know that, um, actually, sorry, if I saw something where I could see like a lot of the back of his jacket on this turn, then he would be kind of throwing his upper body to get things to move around. Um, and then his lower body would be chasing. And I'll, we'll see some images of that in a second here and you'll see the difference. And then this one is working over the balance edge. Um, we talk about two words here and one is inclination and one is angulation. Does anybody know the difference between those words? Um, maybe too far over one way or too far over the other edge of the board. Not bad-ish, yep. Anybody else have any other ideas in there? Angulation is uh, kind of being leaned, right? Being leaned over. Uh, inclination or angula angulation? Uh, inclination. Inclination, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In yeah, right? Inclination. If you imagine this board is on an angle and his feet and legs and everything were just on a line going straight perpendicular and just kind of leaning into the, the turn, that's called inclination. When you start to bend your joints and get your center of mass, which we talked about, more working over the edge that's actually in the snow. And it's not gonna be directly over because there's lots of forces in act, but when we get more of that to happen, then the board will actually arc more and you'll get uh, more of a carved turn to it versus a skidded turn. So we're gonna look at some images and I want you to think about just these three little expressions. Is the person centered and mobile? Are they turning the board with lower body? And are they balancing over the working edge? Before we go on, uh, Eric, sorry, you were asking, uh, which step do we teach how to ride the lift? Oh my goodness. How, when do we teach to ride the lifts? Um, probably once we get to control. So if I, if I go back to our basics, basics happen usually in a really flat area. Um, sliding happens usually like on the littlest pitch you can get, usually where you're making people walk up and down, um, which is also really good skill development. And then when we start to get to control, we start moving around the mountain a little bit more. So that's when I would introduce uh, how to use the lifts. And um, at all of our mountains, I won't say that. At Grouse and Seymour, there's a carpeted area, which is great uh, to learn on. And, um, and then there's small chairlifts uh, at all three mountains as well, which are great to go. Good question. Um, so let's look at some pictures and you guys can tell me what in the world is going on with some of these snowboarders. Centered mobile, train with lower body, balance over the working edge. Let's look at this little person here. How do we feel about any of those statements? Anybody can talk to me, take off your microphones, let's have a good chat. Take off your microphones, put on your microphones, that's even better. Uh, his, his body is kind of being forward at the hips. Yeah, he's got a lot of hip bend, doesn't he? <laughs> And his um, torso is not upright. 
Beautiful. I love that. So that's a, a cause and effect. If we get rid of that bend at his hips, hopefully he's more upright. Yeah. Uh, the cute two little kids are very straight up and down. The two little kids are totally straight up and down, <laughs> but they're also little kids. You know, <laughs> it, the fact that they're standing upright is amazing to me. Um, I'm curious if they could do it not strapped into a snowboard. <laughs> but uh, not bad. They uh, honestly, I actually think the little girl at the bottom here probably has some bent knees. I don't know, but she's looking good. I like her hand position over the tip and the tail, and she just looks really relaxed. This young guy uh, in the top left corner. Do you think he has more weight on his back foot or his front foot? Back foot. Back on his foot. back foot. Yeah, totally. So when we talk uh, about being centered and mobile, um, do we think he's centered? No. 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 No, that, that backhand's out of place too. And the backhand's out of place too, which tells me that what? He's open. He's not. He's open. Yeah. So his forward. shoulder, he's got like a twist in his spine right now, um, trying to find some balance. So um, does anybody know a really good fix for that young guy? Like something you could ask him yeah. to do that would probably fix him out really quickly? I'll yeah. give you a hint. Way off the back foot and lean back a little bit. Yeah. So we, uh, when we were playing up in this slide and I had you guys yeah. doing all these things, what was the ones we did for position and balance? Oh, to take the jump and land? Yeah, just jump. If he just jumped when he landed, chances are his weight would be more equal on his feet. And then we just have to get him to be a little more upright. So yeah, jumping can be a really good little tool for, for all sorts of things, just to recenter and get balanced. Awesome. Um, are we able, so this one, turn is led with the over, oh, turn the board with the lower body. Um, it's hard to see. I don't think any of them are turning. So it's probably really hard to figure that out. And because none of them are turning, they're not on edge. So we don't really know if they're working on the edge. So cool. Most of those are all about uh, centered mobile position. Let's take a look at these folks. Let's start with this guy up in the right corner first. What, uh, what do we see about his positioning? His shoulders are over rotated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he has a twist in the spine and he's going in a straight line, which is the funniest <laughs> thing. And I see this so much when I am just on a chairlift or something and look at snowboarding. So many people have this rotated position um, where they think they need to have their shoulders down the line. And as we do that, then his shoulders are probably square, his hips are probably somewhere um, less than 45 degrees. And then it ends up straightening his front leg and overbending his back leg, which then usually shifts his weight back as well. So he's a bit of a mess. Um, how about this person who looks like they are just finishing a turn to the right to me? Yeah, that guy turns with his upper body. That's for sure. Definitely turns. So when we think about that, that second uh, core competency, this turning uh, the board with the lower body, I'm gonna go with uh, Nay. Not, not a, not a, not a happening for him. He's totally just chucking his whole upper body, and then everything is following, and that totally works. It absolutely works. In fact, it's how we used to teach snowboarding ten years ago. And sometimes, if there's a tree coming at me really fast, it's still how I managed to not hit the tree. It is absolutely the fastest turn you can do. The problem is, is that you get out of balance and you lose your edge control. So that's why we always try and get to initiate with the lower body. Um, in this photo at the bottom, what is going on? I, I tell me what is going on. I think he's like leaning forward on the board, and he's also positioned with his like uh, chest facing forward instead of sideways. Cool. So, so we've got a stance and balance problem. We've got an open body, which probably means they can't actually initiate with the lower body at all, and they're on a flat part, so we don't know if there's there's any uh, balancing on the edge. If we go back Looks to like he's going backwards, he might be. Yeah. yeah. Or coming out of a trick or something. Yeah, yeah it looks like he's cool. coming out of a 180. Yeah, or yeah, about to do one. If you are, that's not the right landing position. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All your weight on your your uh, back foot. You're about to. Yeah, no. <laughs> Does anybody hang on the park? Is anybody a, a park person? Yeah. Yeah. How Sorry, should you land? I was. I was not anymore. Not anymore. So even if that was like a 540, yeah. would you land? You would never land with your hands over 
across your tip and tail like that. No. Yeah, just everything's, everything's sideways there. Cool. Let's look at uh, a couple more and see if we can see what's going on. Oh, this, this one, I like this one a lot, actually. So when we talk about this, this third idea of balancing over the working edge, and we look at this snowboard up here, what, uh, where do you think their center of mass is in this turn? Not over their board. <laughs> not, not, not <laughs> close to over their board. <laughs> There's, so, I mean, I get, I get super technical, super quick, and you guys don't need to be at this level. But when I look at this photo and I don't see any snow spraying at all, they're like, they're not moving that fast. And they're probably about a second away from falling on their face. So their center of mass, if I drew a line, just kind of comes straight down. And looking at the angle of the board, there's just not enough there to support them. They are a second away from falling. If, um, if we look at this snowboarder here, um, so we call this inclination. Sorry, this one is inclination. What do you think what this one is called? Angulation? <laughs> Angulation, yeah. This racer, I mean, I don't know if you look, like this board is like 80 degrees relative to the snow. Like it's incredible. And their center of mass is way back here, but it looks like she is trying to get as much weight as she can more this way to get more force working on that working edge. And it's, I mean, it's, I just love that picture. I think that, I hope I look like that every once in a while when I turn really fast. I probably don't. Um, but that is a good example of angulation and that is a good example of inclination. How about this uh, young lady? There's a few things going on for her. What, uh, thinking about all three of our core competencies, what, what do we see? Hey, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, the, um, the difference between the inclination and the angulation, are you saying the kid above is uh, doing it wrong because they're too inclined, but the, uh, the Olympic like snowboard down, down there is doing it right? These are kind of like, mm, almost maximum inverses one another. So yeah, this inclination, um, if this person hits anything, they're just gonna fall instantly because there's no real pressure working through that edge right now. This is probably about as far as they could lean over. The, the pro snowboarder is trying to get as much of her center of mass over top of that edge to keep it really engaged. She's going really fast. So there's a central fugal force that's working that she's balancing against as well and why she can get those edges to happen like that. But if you imagine if she was straight, like this person is, and her body was in line with that flag, there's no way she could hold that edge. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, I see. So you say angulation at the hips to like counteract the inclination of the body? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, if we look at this snowboarder, obviously the hips um, on the toe side, you need to kind of arc your back a little bit to get the center of mass to move more towards that edge. Does that make sense? I'm gonna say something and I'm gonna regret that it's on camera, but um, the terms humping and dumping are really good for understanding how, how to get the right positions. <laughs> if, uh, if you think like you're using a washroom and you're on, is it your toe side or your heel side? You tell me. If you're like this, you're getting more pressure. On heel side. On your heel on side. Your and then if you push your hips forward and kind of arch your back a little bit, you're getting more on your toe side. Your toes. Yeah. So. Those are kind of the beginning moves um, to understand how to get more of your center of mass over that working edge. So anytime you kind of see a C position, either on the toe side or the heel side, you know that somebody is trying to make a move to get that to happen. Um, this guy in the orange jacket's a little bit open in my, my opinion. So he's probably not turning with the lower body. He's probably turning with his upper body, but I like what he's trying to do as far as getting over the working edge. So this young lady in pink, what do you think is going on there? Everything. It's right. I said everything. Everything. <laughs> everything is going on. First of all, fabulous outfit. Love what's going on. Um, love, no, no, love a bright the, pant. The knees. How is her? So is she centered and mobile in her position? No, she's on no. her back foot more. Skiing on her back foot. Cool. I love it. Is the turning uh, the board with the lower body? No. Well, her knees aren't very bent, so <laughs> it's. Looks like she's using her arms more or something, maybe. I would probably think you're right. She's probably going to do something with her arms first before. Um, she also has a twist in her spine because of that position. So just staying balanced before you do anything is really tricky. And then is she balanced over the working edge? No. No. 
she's got kind of her center of mass is it's probably not bad because she's going pretty slow but her center of mass is probably just falling here versus you know she could put a little bit of just arch here and that would really get a lot more weight there and be able to arc the board a little bit more so i love it so in just a couple of pictures and learning three little statements you're all now almost experts at recognizing what's going on with snowboarders that easy <laughs> It, it really is that easy. So like, you don't have to overcomplicate any of this. When I look at somebody and I'm snowboarding, I just think of those three statements. And then once I've identified it, then let's say, you know, she is not very, this little girl is not very centered and mobile. So then I just think to my skills and I go, great. Uh, if I think about my skills, which one do I want to work on? Well, it's probably not pivoting. It's probably not edging. It might be a little bit of pressure control front and back but it's probably this guy. It's probably positioning and balancing and I need to start there and make sure that she's got some good fundamentals. And then once she has some better development there, then we can go back into our steps. So we go, cool, I like this. Let's go work some controlling type maneuvers and make sure that she has some really good edge control. And then we'll teach her a little bit about pressure and then we'll teach her how to put it all together at the pivot. Awesome. My last slide with all that, um, when it's all said and done, Really, it's all about having fun. Well, I should say that first. First, we try and be safe. Then we try and have a lot of fun. And then we accidentally learn. And as long as you remember that in all your lessons, whether it's with adaptive or mainstream or whatever, um, you're always going to have a good time. So, and I wish I could do a box when I was this big. That's pretty fun. Uh, a few more slides, and then we'll uh, get into a little Q&A stuff. Um, I actually stole this slide from uh, the Ski Association, although they use exactly the same terms in the snowboard manual. I just like the slide better from the ski, ski position. And what this is, is just understanding how we acquire physical literacy or how we learn a new physical skill. And we go through five stages of learning. So the first one's called initiation. Then we have acquisition, consolidation, refinement, and creative variation. And if you think about a skill, maybe that you take for granted, but maybe you still have some you know, residual frustration over, I think about when I learned how to tie my shoelaces as a kid. I remember the first time like my brother showed me and he just whips it up in five seconds and I'm like, what did you just do? What magic did you just pull off? That's like initiation. Like you're just like, wow, ah, this is cool. And then you, you, know, you try and fumble with some of the moves and it's hard and then you finally accidentally do it once and that is initiation. You just, you did it once. And then when we start to ask some more questions, get some more information and we can get to a point of acquisition where we know a little bit about what we're trying to do um, but we don't always do it successfully. And that, I, I feel like I was at that stage for a long time tying shoes. Like I knew what to do and I'd try for like half an hour and then my brother would come and rescue me and just do it in five seconds. Um, but I knew what I was trying to do and I kept practicing and the skills were getting better. Then we moved to consolidation where I still have to think about it, but I have a lot of success a lot of the time and I become pretty functional. Then we get into refinement, right? And that's when like, it's like you think about it one day and you're like, huh, watch this. Oh, hey, you know what? I found another way to do it. I can do this bunny rabbit thing now. <laughs> and I can do the loop and swoop. <laughs> And then you go to Google and you find there's another one where you just like grab two points. I don't know if you've looked this up and you just pull and everything's done. Um, but you're looking ways just to get better and better and faster and more efficient. And you're not really thinking about it at all most of the time when you're doing the task. And then the last step of that is creative variation where you just start to come up with ridiculous things by yourself. You know, like, huh, I wonder if I can do this one-handed. I wonder if I can do this with my eyes closed. And you start taking the same skill and turning it around a little bit. Um, so we do that in snowboarding and skiing all the time. And anytime we go to teach somebody a new skill, we need to allow them a little bit of time to go through these steps. So just being aware of them uh, is the important part. You don't need to memorize this. You don't need to quote it. It's just to be aware that initiation is very awe. Uh, acquisition takes a little bit of fumbling. Consolidation is when you start to get it together. Refinements when you start to get really good. And then you just get to go create a variant and turn it upside down and do double corks and all sorts of fun stuff. Questions about that part? Excellent. Um, next, we're going to just look at the way that people kind of learn. So, and this works shockingly well for kids, uh, but even more importantly, I think for adults. 
And I think somewhere along the line, we believe that adults can just have people talk to them and not have other types of information. So now we do slideshows and there's pictures and sometimes I get people to stand up and interact and move around. And all those are different ways of helping people learn. So when we look at it, there's sort of four categories. We have listeners, watchers, feelers, and doers. So if everybody in their chat wants to put what they think their primary learning uh, is, that would be great. And I will tell you mine. Oh, maybe I won't tell you mine. I, watcher, lots of watchers, that's good. A doer, 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 doer. Lots of doers, watchers. Nice. Um, I have done lots of testing on myself to find out what I am, and I'm, I'm pretty much balanced. I can learn in all the ways pretty equally, which is both a benefit and a frustration, because um, not all things do I learn well through watching, and not all things do I learn well through listening, but different things are different for me. Um, if uh, someone else said, Eric said a bit of everything. Um, I am also a golf professional, which I mentioned earlier. And for golf, I need to feel it. Like if I can get a coach to help me figure out what I'm trying to feel, where I should notice something, um, I can pick it up really quickly. Um, when I uh, want to learn how to play guitar, um, I like watching videos. I find it's the fastest way by a long shot. If I'm wanting to take on uh, just lots of information, I do way better just listening and just focusing on what's being said and repeating back in my head um, to get things sticky and then there are lots of things in my life where I just like to do um, although usually they involve me crashing or doing stupid things um, motorcycling would be one of those um, rollerblading when I first picked that up I'll do her didn't ask anybody just went and did it so those are sort of the ways um, and if if that is true if this is really how people like to learn uh, and we know that these are four solid ways that people learn then we need to find a way to teach that way to make sure that we capture as many learners as we can. So I've gone ahead and um, created a little template for you that you are welcome to steal. In fact, I would encourage you to steal it. And as you work through uh, your CADS evaluation, if you present drills um, that you're gonna be role-playing with in this way, um, your evaluator will just go, oh yeah, that's, yeah, they know what they're doing, life is good. Lots of easy free check boxes. So the first thing I would do uh, if I'm going to teach a, a drill and this is that something called the headlight drill. So in the headlight drill, um, we're going to come up with why we're doing it and find some good, simple words to describe it to the person that likes to listen. So the why, you know, we're going to do this drill to get your lower body to I said, lead, not leave, leave the turn. That's good. Lead the turn. Um, how we're going to do it. I want you to imagine that you are snowboarding in the dark. And that you need to use an imaginary light that's on your knee to light up your path that you want to snowboard towards. So if somebody needs words, they're going to be able to take that and go, okay, I know exactly what this person's asking me to do. For the watchers, what we're going to get you to do is walk about 20 meters up the hill so that you can give them a really good demonstration as you're above them, coming down in front of them, and then going beyond them. So they get to see the front of you, the side of you, and the back of you. And that way they'll get a really good sense of what's going on. And the challenge with, with watchers is that your demo needs to be perfect or as perfect as you know how. Because if that's really how they learn, they're going to mimic everything you do. So if you have poor balance, as an example, and you've got a little balance on the back and you kind of have your hand up, they will do it exactly that way because that's what you showed them. So I love watchers, but I need, I need to always practice my drills. So when I'm out skiing or snowboarding by myself, usually one or two runs, I'll just practice some drills, you know, maybe five or 10 repetitions of a bunch of drills I know and just have that be a run so that I can stay sharp on that. As I am uh, doing that demo, I want to try and figure out something that I can tell the feeler. So if you think about this drill and if you want, you can get up and actually make this movement of trying to imagine you're like moving this headlight around what is something that I can tell them to think about inside their skin? So the way a muscle contracts or extends or a pressure that you might feel at somewhere in your foot or against your binding or something that they can really get behind and think about as a feeling of success. What do you think might be a good option? I will welcome microphone or chat. Get up and think about it. If you're going to be doing this and you're driving with that knee, think about what you're going to feel 
on your board, your foot, your knee, your head, your hip, what are you gonna feel? So far, I have no answers by anybody. This is so terrifying. You, you want us to answer, like if we're the student, say. So answer, so you want to relay to the student something that they're gonna be able to feel when they're doing it right. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. They're gonna feel the pressure on their uh, bottom leading foot. So you're gonna feel a, a weight a pressure shift onto your front foot? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Cool. As you're leading away with it. Okay, and is it gonna be through the whole flat of your foot or is it gonna kind of move around on your foot a little bit? Depending on which side you're turning to, your toe or your heel. Okay, yeah, I'm good with that. What else? Feeling your body going up and down. You're gonna feel your body going up and down. Like, yeah, the movement. Or like left and right, yeah. I don't know if I get a lot of up and down when I just kind of, I imagine there's a, a light there and I'm just kind of trying to shine it to the new direction. Oh, the light part. Yep. <laughs> Adam, what do you think? Oh, now I'm just gonna start putting people on the, see now Adam's actually going to make a sandwich, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and no? really didn't no? put away dinner. I'm sorry, yeah. what did you mean? <laughs> I, Adam, I was totally kidding. Place. It's okay. It's a, <laughs> What's up? We're just trying to we're trying to figure out a feeling that we would be able to tell a student if we were trying to do this headlight drill, where we're kind of driving that knee and pointing in the direction we want to go. A feeling that you could tell someone to hold, like that's how you know you're doing it right. Yeah. What would they notice in their body if you're doing it really right? Maybe less wobble, like feeling like you're kind of anchored into your edge, that you're coming around the corner properly with the way you're. You're oriented as opposed to like trying to force it one way or the other catch your balance so i don't disagree that that'll be a result i'm trying to think about in their body something they can feel so it's hard to feel what's going on with your snowboard you can feel stuff in your feet that that might translate directly through your snowboard um so you might feel like a vibration coming up when you like dig into the side of the mountain with the um, toe or heel side of your board. You might hear feel like a, a little bit of, of like if you made the turn. I don't know. I don't know if this um, actually matches with the drill. Let's say you're doing the whole turn yep. and then um, the toe or heel edge of your board uh, is like scraping kind of. Yeah, so you might you might feel a little like chatter or something. Yeah. I'm I'm not even going to answer this one for you. I'm going to let you go and play. So next time you're on the snow, try and play this headlight drill and see if you can come up with a feeling that's something that somebody could really focus on. I generally focus on feelings in the foot are really good. Um, if there's any sort of uh, extension or uh, retraction of any big muscles so like your quads or your calves those are good things mm -hmm. to think about and be able to mention that if someone's doing it well they'll feel something um, when I even if I just do this one and I'll, I'll give you one but there's lots but I would even just feel like my legs widen me a little bit as I do this drill mm -hmm. and if I do that and really just rolling that my I feel like my knees are going to get further apart so I'll feel like my legs are spreading a little bit and you're almost getting into a bit of a cowboy stance so there are lots of them you can use for feeler. The important thing is to give the feeler something to focus on that, that they'll know they're doing it right. So that's good. Um, and then as we get uh, into, sorry? We also say like uh, in relation to the student's balance, like maybe it can also feel the balance of themselves on the board. Let's say a lot of students, they like to lean back because it feels safe, but then they feel the boards like ripping out under their feet. Yeah, so if somebody was, so if we were working more on a drill, um, this becomes almost a pivoting drill, the headlight drill. But if we were doing some tactic to help them with their um, position and balance, then um, talking about the feeling of percentage of weight on each foot could be a great thing to talk about for a feeler, right? So most of the time we wanna feel kind of 50-50. But maybe as we start that turn, maybe we kind of go to 60-40 for a second and then we rebalance to 50-50. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Cool. Who was that? Oh, sorry. That was me, Eric. Eric, nicely done. Cool. Uh, all right. The last type of learner is that doer that we talked about. So the, key, the thing with doers is just let them go do it because they probably didn't listen to your explanation. They probably had their eyes closed or looking at something while you were trying to show them a demo 
when you talked about feelings, they thought they were in therapy and they didn't notice. So now they just want to go and do and let them do. It's fine. Um, the thing with doers is that you have to know exactly what you're looking for. And then you have to give them really specific feedback so they know um, whether they did it well or not. And the more specific your feedback, then the quicker they'll be able to try it again and, and get a, a better return on, on their investment. So some things I might notice here um, that the movement starts with their knees. So you don't want to see any upper body movement or anything. You want to really see that knee be the first thing that moves in this drill. You want to see that uh, their whole body travels with their knees and hips all square. And that if they're doing it well, they're probably going to turn quicker than if they'd been using an upper body movement. An upper body movement works, but it takes a few seconds usually for the board to catch up. When you drive with that knee, it should be pretty quick that they're able to initiate those turns. So those are a couple of things I would look for for the doer. Does that kind of make sense? Thumbs up in the chat if that is good-ish. This is the fastest cheating way. Come up with a why and a how. Do a great demo when you're doing the, and climb up the hill so they can see you do it from three different sides. Figure out the feeling and then let the doers try and get some feedback. Cool. Um, somebody also put in the chat that um, there was some feeling on the shins. I love feeling on the shin anywhere, boot, yeah. Could be a feeling in the boot or the binding, 100%. Cool. All right, let's uh, look at just a couple more slides and then we're done. Um, this is something that I ripped out of the Cassie manual because I just love it. And I wish that the ski manual would adopt it. And it's a, something called the PTT um, way of delivering feedback. Positive to try. And what they want us to do and what they found works really well, um, especially with teenagers seems to be the, the most effective for this, is that if you highlight what they're doing really well and then build on that and give them something to work on next time, then they'll take on that information really easily. Because who doesn't like positive feedback? It always feels good. You know, if, you're, if you start it and go, hey, you know what? That was really good, but you know what? I think you should do this and that and the other thing. You're like, what? Why did you even say it was good? You didn't even mean that. So if I highlight something, I say, hey, you know what? On that headlight drill, I could really see that you were driving with that knee to start things. That's amazing. You know, what I really am looking for you to do is just um, at the same time, be really balanced when you're doing that. So next time I want you to try and drive that knee, but make sure that you have a little more weight on your, on your front foot and just see how that works for you. Does that make sense? Really nice way to deliver a feedback. So the PTT, um, you'll probably hear that when you do your on snow session. And if you don't, totally bust the instructor for not using it. I give you permission. Last thing, uh, just have some more resources for you to go and check out. So if you haven't been to the CADS website, which is our national website, um, their, web, their address is www.cads.ski. I've already given them crap that it's not ski and snowboard or just dot snowboard, um, but it is dot ski at the moment. And if you go there and you find the instructor tab, there is tons of resource for you uh, as far as the evaluations coming up for CADS, um, some pre-work books that'll talk about a lot of things that we talked about tonight and the, the Cassie sort of over you. Um, wonderful resource. Uh, Cassie also has a YouTube channel where they've got lots of their top instructors doing drills and showing you more about how to snowboard um, all the way from, you know, the first kiddo lesson from the littlest tiny person to working with adults and, and best ways to function there. Um, use other instructors as resource. Uh, we have a lot of instructors to give you an idea. We have almost 500 volunteers this year and about 350 of them are already certified and about another hundred will get certified in the next month. So there's a lot of people there that are passionate about what we're doing. Um, so use each other. Um, one of my favorite things is called the chairlift game, uh, where if I'm hanging out with another instructor or if I'm just with myself or my wife knows this game because we play it a lot, we'll just look at the snowboarders and as they're coming down and, and just think about those three core competencies and go, cool, which one, which one would I work on first? What is the biggest challenge? Does anybody remember any of the core competencies? You can either put it in the chat or just turn off your mic and tell me one. Centered, centered and mobile position. Centered mobile position. I love that. Turning the board all the, with the lower body. Turning with the lower body. Yep. And the last one. Balance over the working edge. Balanced over the working edge. You guys are awesome. And some people put it in the chat too. Thank you. Yeah. So when I'm on the chairlift, I just, I'm always assessing people and then I'll think, okay, so this is, this is their biggest challenge or where I'd like to work first. You know, how can I help them? What are, what are some drills I either know or what can I just make up that's ridiculous? Um, 
that I think would help them. And it just helps me keep evolving as an instructor. Uh, other good resource, there's this thing called Google. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's a brand new thing uh, in the world. Um, you can just type in any question you have and answers will start popping up. So there's tons of snowboard information out there. Um, it's sometimes even interesting to look at other countries' snowboard information and what they're teaching. Um, there's only so many directions that we can move and that the snowboard can move. So they're all similar, but sometimes you can find good little nuggets uh, that you want to steal. With that being said, I think that brings us to the end of the evening. And I hope that you just got a good overview of some of the things that you're going to hear when you're on snow for your Cassie overview or when you're coming to the CADS course. Um, so that hopefully there's less time spent standing around and talking in the snow and more time getting uh, some riding in and, and just learning. Um, anybody have any questions specific to tonight? Otherwise, I'm going to return off the recording and...